structure and operating principle of a four-stroke engine. So-called heat engines convert the heat energy generated by combustion into mechanical energy. This typically includes internal combustion engines. As an example, we will look at the so-called four-stroke piston engine. It mainly consists of an engine housing with cooling fins, the interior of which forms the shape of a cylinder. Inside this cylinder, a piston slides, which is connected to the crankshaft via the connecting rod. In cars or motorcycles, this crankshaft drives the wheels through a gearbox. The interior of the cylinder is sealed by an intake and an exhaust valve, which are housed in the cylinder head. The control of the valves for intake and exhaust of the fuel mixture is carried out by rotating cams. These are mounted on the so-called camshaft. Since valve timing is based on the position of the piston, the camshaft is connected to the crankshaft via a timing chain. The ignition of the intake and compressed fuel-air mixture in gasoline engines is triggered by a spark plug. In diesel engines, ignition is controlled by the timing of the injection of diesel fuel into the combustion chamber, where it ignites spontaneously due to the high temperatures present. The name four-stroke internal combustion engine refers to the division of the processes into a total of four steps. These steps are also called strokes, which we will now explain in more detail. In the first stroke, known as the intake stroke, the engine draws in the fuel-air mixture or just air through the intake valve, which is open, while the exhaust valve remains closed, as the piston moves downward. In engines with internal mixture formation, only air is drawn in, and the combustible fuel-air mixture is created inside the cylinder. This is the case, for example, in diesel engines or gasoline direct injection engines. External mixture formation refers to when the fuel-air mixture is mixed outside the cylinder and is already combustible when drawn in. This is the case, for example, in carburetor engines or engines with intake manifold injection. When the piston reaches the bottom of its stroke, the intake valve closes, and the second stroke, known as the compression stroke, begins. The position of the piston at the lowest point, and thus at the largest cylinder volume, is called the bottom dead center. After reaching this bottom dead center, the air-fuel mixture is compressed by the upward movement of the piston with the valves closed. At the top dead center, the cylinder volume is at its smallest, and the gas inside is thus maximally compressed. Due to the compression of the gases, the temperatures in gasoline engines rise to over 450 degrees Celsius. Diesel engines reach much higher temperatures of over 650 degrees Celsius due to the higher compression ratio. The work required for compression comes from the rotational energy of the flywheels attached to the crankshaft. Just before reaching the top dead center, ignition occurs in gasoline engines via the spark plug. In diesel engines, at this point, the fuel injection begins, which ignites spontaneously due to the high temperatures from the compression process. Unlike spark ignition in gasoline engines, diesel engines use what is known as compression ignition. In both cases, the ignition of the fuel-air mixture occurs shortly before reaching the top dead center. The reason for this is that the explosion is a timed process in which the flame front propagates at speeds of up to 200 meters per second. The most effective pressure effect occurs only when the majority of the fuel mixture has been ignited. By this time, the piston has already passed the top dead center. The exact timing of the ignition depends on the engine's speed. In the third stroke, the so-called power stroke, the piston is moved downward by the explosion of the gases and the resulting increase in pressure. Temperatures rise to over 2000 degrees Celsius, generating pressures of up to 150 bar. The gas, during the downward movement, transfers mechanical work via the connecting rod to the crankshaft. As the gas expands, the burned fuel-air mixture cools down, and the pressure drops to below 4 bar. Just before reaching the bottom dead center, the exhaust valve begins to open, starting the fourth stroke, known as the exhaust stroke. Due to the premature opening of the exhaust valve, the exhaust port is fully open once the bottom dead center is passed. The burned gases can now be expelled with relatively low force by the upward movement of the piston. When the piston reaches the top dead center, the exhaust valve closes, and the cycle begins again. Note that, unlike shown in the animation, a cylinder can generally have multiple intake and exhaust valves. This increases the flow cross-section overall and keeps flow losses to a minimum. This improves the so-called volumetric efficiency, which describes the ratio of the actual fresh charge present in a combustion chamber to the theoretically maximum possible charge amount. The term charge generally refers to the gas mixture contained within the cylinder. In most cases, 
The intake cross-sections and thus the intake valves are designed to be somewhat larger than the exhaust valves. The reason for this is the lower pressure difference between the cylinder and the surroundings during the intake process, compared to the exhaust process, where the burn gas can be expelled from the cylinder with a significantly larger pressure difference to the surroundings. In order to push the same amount of charge into the cylinder with a lower pressure difference, the flow cross-section and thus the intake valve must be correspondingly larger. With a higher pressure difference, however, the gas flows faster and thus in a shorter amount of time, allowing the cross-section for exhaust flow to be somewhat smaller. In addition, towards the end of the exhaust stroke, the intake valve begins to open before the exhaust valve is fully closed. This is referred to as valve overlap. As a result, both valves are briefly open at the same time. Due to the inertia of the outgoing gases through the exhaust valve, a vacuum is created in the cylinder space as the piston slows down. This causes fresh charge to be drawn in during the exhaust process, leading to a scavenging effect, which improves the volumetric efficiency. An important characteristic of an engine cylinder is the so-called compression ratio epsilon. This ratio represents the relationship between the maximum cylinder volume before compression at the bottom dead center and the minimum cylinder volume after compression at the top dead center. The higher the compression ratio, meaning the more the mixture can be compressed, the higher the thermal efficiency, and the more effective the conversion of heat energy into mechanical energy. The compression ratios of gasoline engines in the automotive sector are typically around 10 to 1. Therefore, the cylinder volume is compressed to one-tenth of its original volume during compression. However, with too high compression ratios, there is a risk that the fuel will spontaneously ignite due to the significant temperature increase during the intense compression. This could lead to the ignition of the fuel-air mixture significantly before reaching the top dead center. For this reason, the compression ratio cannot be increased indefinitely. In diesel engines, higher compression ratios are required, as compression ignition is deliberately sought. The compression ratios are about twice as high as those in gasoline engines, typically around 20 to 1. Premature ignition of the mixture is avoided by the precise injection of diesel fuel, preventing the fuel from being already combustible in the engine cylinder during compression. Another important characteristic of an engine cylinder is the so-called displacement. This represents the displaced cylinder volume of the piston as it moves from the bottom dead center to the top dead center. The displacement is therefore the difference between the maximum cylinder volume at the bottom dead center and the minimum cylinder volume at the top dead center. The larger the displacement, the more fuel is ultimately brought to the explosion, and the greater the force acting on the piston. This increases the engine's torque and power. Consequently, fuel consumption also rises. For this reason, displacement is used in some countries, among other factors, to calculate vehicle taxes. In passenger car engines, Individual cylinders typically have a displacement of 0.5 liters. If the engine consists of a total of four cylinders, each with 0.5 liters of displacement, the engine is referred to as a 2-liter engine. We will now take a closer look at the advantages and disadvantages of having multiple cylinders in an engine. First, it should be noted that the four-stroke cycle in a four-stroke engine occurs within two crankshaft revolutions. Therefore, if only one cylinder were used in the engine, there would essentially be a lot of idle time. Due to the imbalance, this would lead to strong vibrations and loud engine noises. A clear example of such loud and rough operation can be seen in older tractors, which were often built with single-cylinder engines in the past. In modern vehicles, multiple cylinders are therefore arranged in a motor block, driving a common crankshaft. For example, if four cylinders form an engine, it is referred to as a four-cylinder engine. Depending on how the cylinders are arranged, such as in a straight line, in a V-shape, horizontally, or radially, the engine is referred to as a straight engine, or inline engine, V-engine, boxer engine, or radial engine, also called star engine. In four-cylinder engines, each half-turn of the crankshaft is associated with a power stroke from one of the four cylinders. This increases the smoothness of operation. If you number the cylinders of a four-cylinder inline engine from one to four, the ignition occurs either in the sequence 1, 3, 4, 2, or in the ignition order 1, 2, 4, 3. Compared to inline engines, V engines have a shorter length and can be better cooled with air cooling, as the cylinders are more evenly exposed to the airflow. However, V engines are often more complicated to manufacture, as components like cylinder heads and camshafts need to be duplicated. Additionally, two exhaust manifolds are often required. Compared to inline or V-engines, 
Boxer engines have the advantage that the reciprocating masses and thus the imbalance of rotation cancel each other out. As a result, the engine operates more smoothly with lower noise levels and reduced mechanical stress. However, boxer engines have the disadvantage of requiring more space for installation and higher manufacturing costs. Additionally, it must be taken into account that, due to the horizontal arrangement of the cylinders, oil tends to accumulate on the lower half of the cylinders. Star engines are often used to drive propellers in aircraft. The advantage is their short overall length and the effective compensation of inertial forces. This reduces mechanical stress due to reduced vibrations, improving smoothness. A disadvantage is the large frontal area of the engine, which increases air resistance, especially with conventional air cooling. Additionally, the pipework for the intake of fresh charge and exhaust lines must be designed more complexly, which increases design effort and consequently costs. In general, the more cylinders an engine has, the more complex its manufacturing process is, as several components, such as the valves, need to be perfectly coordinated. At the same time, the internal friction of the engine increases, as multiple valves, for example, must be opened and closed with force. The number of bearings for the individual components also increases, which further raises the engine's friction. All of this ultimately leads to an increase in fuel consumption. For this reason, more and more cars and motorbikes today are being powered by three-cylinder engines instead of four-cylinder engines. Although they do not run as smoothly as four-cylinder engines, these engines are cheaper to manufacture and consume less fuel. Both of these factors have a huge influence on the purchase decision. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.